Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your first of the weekly updates with Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And today we're going to have a bit of a look about why the science isn't working, what we've been doing to try and get that working, and other sort of loosely related things. No, I, I, I tell a lie, everything today is going to be about getting the science up and working because that's the most important thing. So let's get stuck in. As you might remember from previous videos, we're, uh, we're, we're trying to do Mining Productivity 13 at the moment, and that's been going on for most of the last month because it's difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because, well, it requires 35,000 researches to be done. And at the moment, well, it requires quite a lot of difficult think packs to create. So we've got, it needs the Bio4s, which are, they're okay at the moment, as you can see by the number on the belt over here, but it also specifically requires the Advanced Science Pack 1. And actually everything we might want to do at the moment requires Advanced Science Pack 1. So that's a bit of a problem. And over here you can see there aren't any. So if we, if we follow it back, well, we did we did this last week. It, it follows it back through to here. We, we're not getting the catalogs. We're not getting the upvote data. And if we go back far enough, it turns out that that's because we have a shortage of imosite, or specifically imosite crystals. These ones coming out here. And well, as you can see at the moment, they are coming through. They're being brought over from Taras in the spaceship, being unloaded here. The train is often being busy, so maybe it's gone to deliver some. But essentially, this is the problem area at the moment. We don't have enough of them coming through. We don't have enough of them being made. And I'm still not 100% sure about the train that's delivering them. But you know, we'll, we'll we'll solve one problem at a time, and we'll take a look at that in a bit. But that means essentially the, the imosite is the problem at the moment, even if we do have quite a lot of it available right now. There is there's four and a half thousand in the in the warehouse it's not a huge amount but it is at least it's some so it's ticking over but that is where the problem is there Tristan did force through a train's worth of um, imosite crystals and took it over to the uh, the advanced science production way over here where it's being made into the upvote data uh, via um, actually uh, that's not quite true actually it's being made no it's, it, it didn't come over to here it, it was sent down onto the ground the imosite crystals need to be brought over to here where they are made into the energy control units and those are what I was thinking of that then get brought along here so because Tristan's been pushing the trains through a little bit we actually now have a supply of these energy control units here which means we are making the upvote data, albeit rather slowly. And so, uh, actually, I take it back. There is a, there's a decent supply of it down here. There's two and a half thousand. It's actually the quantum computation data that we seem to be short of. Now, let's have a quick look at that one. What what creates that? So that's these ones up here, and it's <laughs> it's our old friend the quantum processor. I suspect. I suspect this is yes. Look, they're, they're about to run out there. So it's, it's yes, old friend the quantum processor. We need six of those for every single one of these cards we make. So uh, no wonder the pro production is struggling. Uh, so that's going to be, yes, it's another reason for us to be looking into um, in, into production of those things. That said, the Immersite is still a little bit of a concern, as you saw by the fact that there wasn't all that much in the station, so I don't feel my time has been too wasted. I mentioned the Bio4 science earlier, and that's run okay. As you can see, we've, we've got enough of it at the moment, but we've been struggling a little bit with some of the intermediates for that up here. So, and at the moment, well, how are we doing? Well, well, it looks like those two, those two are both okay. These two are okay. So we seem to have enough of the Bio intermediates at the moment. So that's going pretty well. And I'll talk about that a bit more later when I get onto the Vitalik everything stuff a bit later on in, in this video. But for now, yes, this seems this seems to be going quite well. The, the the problem is very much with the advanced science, and it turns out that's not an Immersion problem. It's a Holmium problem. However, as I say, there is still an immersion problem, and so that's something that's worth looking into. And so, in the interest of making some improvements there, I came back over to Taras. That's the uh, the planet we set up where all the, the immersion comes from. I uh, brought a load of stuff over here, and there were a few things I wanted to do. The main thing was just generally increase the amount of immersite crystal and immersion plate coming from here, and just make sure everything is running really, really nicely. And to that end, I put in a couple of extra core mines. I think that one may or may not be new. I don't. I think that one. I think that one was already there. But I added this one up here and the ridiculously long Mark belt that runs runs across it. As I said in the previous video, can, can you tell this planet was originally set up by Mark? <laughs> and I went to set up another one over here, but I'd run out of drills by that point. Um, because I had also set up, I believe, these two over here and this uh, raw imosite mine here, where we're digging it up out of the caves here. It's being put onto the belt. And this is a slightly dirty system, which I'm not 100% proud of. But down here, we essentially have a belt that has the imosite core chunks on one side of the belt and raw imosite on the other side of it. And that flows along here and then it gets topped up a little bit by this belt bringing it in from below. Heads over this way, over this large wet slimy area. Past here where is another drill that's adding even more onto it. And once again you can see that the drill is passing the uh, the, the Immersite core chunks out on the bottom side. Now it's not enforced but they do tend to go onto that side as long as the flow keeps going. And so we've got a nice healthy flow of uh, Immersite core chunks and raw Immersite coming along here. Now it doesn't strictly matter which side of the belt which one is on because along here I'm nope there's another one and then there's another one being added in here and then for no apparent reason there's a shuffle that is putting them onto both sides. Well it's a belt balancer really but it's putting them onto both sides 
sides of the belt. So it's a good thing it doesn't matter, because then somewhere over here on the other side of this lake, I'm splitting out the core chunks to go one way and the raw emersite to go the other. And the core chunks are being added onto the other belts, then flowing into the back of the processing system somewhere over here. Yeah, somehow that all makes it into here. All the core chunks get pulverized down over here and turned into raw emersite and, uh, and, the, and the stone that comes out as well as a byproduct and, and the core chunks. And then that and the raw emersite that's coming from those mines is then being processed over here. So this is still the same system that was in use before. I've just added a bit more input to it and things are granted a little bit of a mess. Perhaps I need to do this a little a little bit differently with maybe some more, maybe some actual proper balancers in here just to make sure everything runs nicely. But at the moment it does seem to be working. The belt, the input belts do seem to be flowing quite nicely, um, although actually this one is stuttering a bit. I should probably have a look at this one and find out why it's not using both sides of the belt, and I think that's because it's coming... Oh, no, I was going to say, I, th I, I don't know why this isn't, isn't using... Oh, right, there we go. So what? So here, perhaps if I... No, there's, there's, I don't see an easy way to do it uh, without going in and doing a bit, a, a bit of he fairly heavy editing. But if I can get this onto both sides of the belt, then we should get a little bit more coming through. Things will go a little bit better, and a bit of, uh, so a bit of side balancing is required there. But this has meant that we now have more uh, raw immersite coming in here, more, more crushed immersite or immersite powder coming out, allowing us to then make the immersium sulfide, and then more of the powder, and that's allowing us to make more of, more of everything over here. And if we take a look at the production graph over the last 10 hours, well, you can see that the uh, the raw immersite has, well, it was get, trundling along at this rate before the stream, and then it's nudged up to here, and then a little bit higher still, so that's getting more stuff running. I'm not sure why it was so high beforehand with these wild spikes going on here, because that looks that looks like it was more than we're on at the moment, so I'm a bit perturbed by that. I think maybe there were some other mines that were still working, and they've, they've since failed. But anyway, yes, we've got this, these, these uh, two big step increases coming out here. And in fact, maybe that, um, that drop here is why we've suddenly started having problems. And so I've had to come out, because the mines are starting to fail, I've had to come out and put in more in additional input, from, largely from core mines, in order to get the, uh, the input rate back up again. But as we follow this through, we can then see that the, uh, yes, the, the, the amount of immersite crystal we've been making has gone from this wibbly thing to being much more healthy along here. So a little bit of a spike there for reasons I wouldn't like to uh, consider, and then it's gone up a little bit towards the end as well. So that's not gone up as, by as much as I would expect, given how much the raw immersite production has gone up. Perhaps that's because we've been using a lot more plate, and yes, if we look in here, the plate has gone up a bit, and if we get rid of that one, you can see the plate has spiked up quite a bit. And then there was an interesting effect about a bit less than an hour ago, when I was actually going in there and when I was working on it, and you can see that at this point, the amount of immersite crystal created has gone up quite a bit, and the amount of immersion in plate has gone down noticeably. And then there's been a little bit of an increase over here once I've incre increased the supply of, of it all a little bit further. And that was a bit of a mystery. That was quite a weird one. And we, we've had a bit of a think about it, and we suspect that the reason this has changed is because at the moment, as you can see, the immersite crystal is limited by the amount of immersium sulfide coming in, the, the pink liquid. Uh, so when, so the, these belts here are completely full, but whenever there's enough of the liquid, these machines will run a little bit and they'll pull in all the powder they need. Up here, that means all the rest of the powder is then being passed off to these two machines to be made into plate. And so we think that if we get a little bit more available here, then it means a bit more. there's a bit more liquid available, which means these machines grab it a little bit more quickly. And that means that they pull more powder off here, and that means that these machines start to get actually 50 percent of the powder so less of it gets fed over to these machines up here so it's a weird sort of a weird side effect of, of the balancing that's going on that I wouldn't really have expected but it turns out that if we can if we if we make more of the liquid we end up making less plate however since most of the things we're doing seem to be, require more crystal I'm not too sorry about that However, however, um, the, the plate will eventually back up if we have too much of it, so if we do get to the point where we've got enough, it, the balancing doesn't matter, the system will auto-balance over here, it'll stop making the plate if we have too much of it, and start making more crystal instead. So that means that the answer is still very much going to be, keep increasing the input side over here, and eventually we'll have enough coming out on the other side. Looking at the production quantities over here, things are definitely struggling. As you can see, there's, there's 1.8 thousand a minute being made of the, uh, the crystals and only 1.7 thousand being used. Yes, they're the opposite way around. That's because the numbers are different. I uh, will just have to deal with it. Um, so that's, so those, I mean, those numbers are, are faintly positive uh, in that this one is bigger than this one. And the graph has gone upwards and hasn't been doing sort of the dropping off to zero the effect that you get when you're really, really short of things. So I am wondering if this means maybe we have enough 
imacite crystal at this point, and we just need to wait for the buffers to fill up, etc, etc. Now, I would like the buffers to fill up a bit more quickly, and I would like the production number to be significantly bigger than the uh, consumption number, at least until everything is full. So I think I still want to carry on expanding this process a little bit, but I think, but it does look, it looks optimistic, cautiously optimistic and promising. The plate consumption, I suspect maybe this is quite so high, perhaps because I stole an enormous number of purple belts in a, uh, in a recent stream, and I think the system might be trying to catch up with them, and that's why the c consumption has been so high for the last eight hours. Uh, sorry, the last eight, I was eight minutes actually. If we look back over the last hour, then we start to see the numbers look a little bit more um, friendly. We've got comparable numbers here on the on the plate uh, production consumption. Still not good because we're using more than we're producing, but at least slightly more optimistic. And similarly down here, we can see the same sort of thing. We've got producing slightly more than we've been using, even though production seems to have ramped up here. Now this production ramping up is probably because a spaceship arrived, and maybe we are actually seeing that nosedive that I was talking about as the as the um, supply at the other end just dwindles down very very quickly. So I think yes, we do need. I think we do need to expand the immersion production a lot further. We'll see how that goes. I mean, I, I've been out there. I've, I've done a little bit of, of uh, what I can, but I'm starting to run out of machines to install and implement. And I think the next thing to do might be to go after more of the immersite caves. That's the sort of the, the normal basic mining areas, like uh, like like this one that's still sort of kind of running. I can nick these drills, rebalance the belt, and then go off and perhaps start digging up these patches up here, which are quite he quite hefty. We're talking, we're seeing significant numbers of millions up here. Uh, and as long as I can get enough of it transported over, so that might mean lots of belts, or I might just have to rebel against what Mark has been doing and put start putting in train systems. <laughs> that might be more effective. Uh, we can get that brought over to here, and then maybe put in another one of these systems at the top as well. Uh, we see that we, we're looking at the um, quantity flowing through here. I suspect that we're still quite a long way below capacity. I think these machines could be running faster. We're seeing some red lights on these ones quite a lot of the time, uh, and in fact all the way back through it. So I think there's still potential to chuck a lot more input into the system without it jamming up. But if and when it does, then it's just going to be a case of putting in, putting in another set of pulverizers and another set, another copy of the processing system in down here. So it, it's fairly easy. Now that I've made a simple system like this, it's quite easy to copy and paste it as much as it's needed. And producing all this MSI produces quite a lot of byproducts, as you'll be used to. So you can see there's huge amounts of sand pouring out here, and we've got loads of sulphur pouring out here. Now the sulphur isn't a problem, we're just shipping that back off to Norvis. It then gets taken over to other planets like Egnair and Talos that use it in huge amounts, huge quantities. But the sand was getting quite frustrating, because when you load sand into a spaceship, well it's, it, it has really, really big stacks. It stacks all the way up to 200, which means it takes a long time to load each stack in. Now on the flip side, that's not such a bad thing because it means you can, you can fit a lot of it into the spaceship. So we're not completely filling the spaceship up with sand, but it does slow down the whole process. It takes a long time to load it into the train, it takes a long time to load it into the spaceship, it, and then at the other end it takes a long time to get it back out of the spaceship, load it into the trains and take it to wherever it needs to go. So it's, it's, it's a bit awkward because it's just a bit slow. And so down here on the planet we started pulling all of the sand out and we're turning it into glass instead, and we're shipping that out in, in, in significant quantities as well. But as you can see this quantity is significantly less than this one, and that's because we're using the basic uh, glass cooking recipe which takes in 16 sand and outputs 8 glass. And so we've got literally half the number of things coming out here, and we use a lot of glass over on Norvis, so it's quite useful to ship this back in that state. And we have a signal coming in from Norvis, which I should talk about in a moment, uh, where we're, which is telling us how much we want to send over, and then we've got a control over here that is saying don't send it over if there's already too much. At some point I would like to expand this system as well to produce silicon, but silicon is a slightly more awkward recipe because you need to make quartz first, which you then can grant you granted you can then cook in a furnace, although it looks like you can only use the electric furnaces, you can't use the advanced furnaces, so that's something to be aware of. And quartz is made from uh, sand and water, so I'd need a water supply, but that's fine. There's, there seems to be a pipe of water right here that is basically full, uh, but that requires a filtration plant, and I didn't have any filtration plants, so I wasn't able to set the system up over here to, to, make, to make the silicon as well, because both of those things are required back over on Norvis in quite large quantities, and converting the sand across into glass and silicon will, as I say, significantly reduce the amount of uh, stuff needed to, that goes in the spaceship. And because glass also stacks to 200, well you still have the same sort of issue with loading, and so it, it, um, in that it takes quite a long time to put an entire stack of it into the spaceship. However, because there's half as much of it, it doesn't matter as much, and it still means that we've got plenty of space left in the ship for lots and lots of other things. We could consider starting to convert stone into glass as well, and converting that from stone to sand would roughly double it, then converting it back into glass would halve it again. So I guess, yes, if we converted all the stone into glass, then we'd, fit, we'd be able to fit four times as much of it in the space spaceship and it would make no difference to the loading time. So maybe that's something we should consider. 
going to quartz roughly halves it, and then converting the quartz into silicon halves it again. But I think silicon only stacks up to 50. So actually, so silicon, converting it into silicon would have the same, the same n very little change made to the amount of stuff that can be fitted in the spaceship, but would load more quickly than glass or stone would. So silicon would be a good thing to turn it into. It's just a shame we don't have the machinery available over here in order to do so. And so over at the other end, where all the stuff comes into, this is this is the dump system. So it's brought down from space in a train. It'll then be converted, passed over into another train that will bring it over here. It'll drop it off using these belts here. You've, you've seen that system before. So it's mean now Tristan over here has added in a filter over here that's bringing out, well, he seems to be bringing out Immersite for some reason. I think that might have been because I shipped some over by mistake due to just sort of, you know, general fail. And he's also pulling out the glass and the silicon, goes down a belt over here, winds through here. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with this one. Uh, putting it into, into a train over here. Uh, I don't know why he's putting it in there. I guess it's going to be sent back to me at some point with extreme prejudice. And then the silicon can come through here to go to wherever silicon is used up. Blimey, that's all the way down here. And also the glass will similarly be brought out to down this belt to be brought over to um, <laughs> here where glass is used up. And these two warehouses, these are extra warehouses and they've been linked in with these red cables. They've been linked together and over to a transmitter. And so that means we're going to be signalling how much glass and how much silicon there is in, in these two warehouses oh, back over to Taras. And that signal is the one that I'm using to decide whether I should be passing more glass and more silicon over into the spaceship. And so the idea is that we want these warehouses to be about half full but they'll be, they'll be used as a priority over here. So it's another place for us to get rid of just all of the all of the junk that we're building up in another on another planet, all the byproducts, they can be passed over here and then ditched as in, in the in the in the form of glass and silicon, and that should allow us to get rid of them and get rid of them as a priority, and hopefully and hopefully pass them on fairly easily. And this is the standard system where you you watch how much is in the warehouse. This one always runs and will try and fill the warehouse up. But if the warehouse has less than eighty thousand uh, pieces of glass in it, then the uh, then these belts will run to load it up. So you'll see this will, as it runs now, the trains will be loaded, and we'll start to replenish what's in there from the from the supply that's being made from stone and pulverization over here but if there was any in this warehouse that would be used first as a priority because that's a byproduct that we want to get rid of rather than something we're actively making. This has been quite deliberately set up to only send what's in this warehouse and not send the total in here uh, because we only want because this warehouse is only really relevant to the production on Taras. We haven't yet put in a negative number on here to protect against brownouts but to be honest we ha we're sort of of the feeling that if we're having brownouts on Norvis then we have very very severe problems and uh, that the, and, and, and sending over too much glass and silicon is going to be the least of our worries. But we do have uh, quite a lot of headroom over here. Now, okay, it's not quite as much as it looks like here because the um, I've, I've got the lights turned on in space at the moment, so the uh, this number should be half of what it is. But even so, we're still producing about twice the amount of electricity that we're using. And if we look back over the last long, long time and just look at the accumulators, you can see that we've not used them for about 35 hours. And given that a stream is two hours of game time, that's pretty good. We've been going for several months without any problems. Actually, there's a little bit of a blip there. Anyway, we haven't used them at all in the last 10 hours. But there's, there does seem to be a little blip 18 hours ago, so I'm not sure not sure what happened there. But there was at least a little bit, a, a minor crisis, that we, we, we but we haven't had that again since. So, yeah, things are pretty much okay up there in space. As we've seen in the past, we have some minor issues with the uh, with the amount of the Vita products that are being brought through. As you can see, we currently seem to have enough of the is that spice, that spice I think, and reagent, but we're completely out of extract and a bit low on epoxy. So those are a little bit concerning. And so Tristan has been out over on Big Rid making some improvements and fixing things up a little bit over here. And one of the things he discovered was that we were getting enormous quantities of core chunks being shipped through. And I think I talked about this last week because I did the maths on uh, whether it's better to ship core chunks out as core chunks or as all the various ores and stones and barrels that come out of them. And I reckon it was pretty much a wash until you had at least 50% productivity bonus from the uh, from in, in your pulverizers. And we currently only have 32%. So it's... It's kind of, it kind of doesn't matter wh which way we do it. However, we do need a certain amount of iron on this planet in order to keep the barrel production running uh, for, for both the vitalic uh, acid, which is on this belt up here, and also as, a, as for the uh, for the byproducts that are produced from core mining. But that's pretty much saying we need core mining in order to keep core mining going. So that's a slightly silly statement. However, because we have because we do need need to ship out the vitalic acid, uh, that needs barrels, that needs iron, and therefore we do need to do some core processing. So that are jammed up because. We 
we had too much oil on, on the planet. It wasn't being barreled and wasn't being sent away. So Tristan's put in a, a barreling system here and he sets it up to be an overflow. So he's monitoring this tank over here. When the tank gets up to, I'm going to guess 20,000. Yes, 20,000. It then starts to pump the oil through into here where it can be put into barrels and taken away by the whole rest of the system. And that means that then we, all, we always have a little bit of headroom. We can take, take the spare oil away. We can take all the spare stuff away and, and put it on the spaceship to be, to be used somewhere else. Um, we think this system probably didn't have the overflow on it before because we were using all of the oil on this planet in order to make goodness knows what. And that's getting brought all the way down over here. Well, actually it's being brought to all of the all these sort of areas where it's being made into petroleum gas because apparently you require the petroleum gas in order to grow biomatter. So that's um, it's needed over here. So we are getting through a certain amount of oil. However, we weren't getting through enough to keep, the, uh, the, to keep what was coming out of the core processing all being used up. And so having a barreling system here to take away the excess is fantastic and is exactly what we need. And we already had that system in place dealing with the uh, the light oil here, and it was dealing with the uh, pyroflux, but the pipe has been turned around. How it, and and we seem to not have any spare available here, so presumably all of that pyroflux is being used. Somebody, yes, here we go. Oh, it's all being used to create glass, which is presumably being used for the uh, for the little bottles that we put the reagent into over here, and the epoxy as well. So we need the pyroflux for that, and this system seems to be working quite well for that. All, all these products seem to be in suitable supply. Now we are refilling a belt here with the uh, with the vitalic epoxy because we've got through a lot of it. And if we look up here, but if we look up here at the, at the which belts are actually flowing, you can see that the epoxy and the reagent are both stopped. There is enough of those in the logistics system somewhere, so we just need to send a ship off to take it all away. However, we still have crazy amounts of the enriched vitamin melange coming through here and being fed into the in, into the train into, the, into the, in, to go up to the ship. And so we've got yeah, we've got lots and lots of stuff to go through here. Up at the top side, yep, this is all being loaded in. As you can see, we've got huge amounts of the vitalic uh, vitamin lange extract coming in here and there's lots of other stuff being loaded in as well this all seems i was going to say this all seems to be um the the actual vita products but now looking at the uh, the numbers over there on the right you can see there's also quite a lot of byproducts as well being fed through and if we look in here yeah there's there's a lot of good stuff and there's a lot of just random byproducty stuff as well so we'll, we'll load all of that into the spaceship at the moment we seem to be loading in just the junk but you know that's an important step we'll eventually get in the uh, stuff we want as well and we're unloading the um, the bits and pieces that are needed over on this planet as well so this is this is the spaceship running quite nicely. The reason so much of this is flowing through is because Tristan took my comments from last week's video, and he's now increased the numbers on the uh, on the sushi system down here. So there's much larger numbers being watched for for the memory cells. Uh, so over here we're now watching for 20,000 vitamin lange extract. Uh, 5,000 vitalic reagent and 5,000 vitalic epoxy. So those are, those are bigger numbers because we had problems. And I think we had the problems due to loss, losses in the memory cell system. So maybe when Mark comes back, he can do, he can go in and do some and tweak the numbers in these a little bit or will reset something and just get things a bit more back where they're supposed to be because the numbers aren't quite right. But that means we will then end up with a lot more being fed through over here. That's quite impressive. You can see that despite the fact that the ship is over there in Big Red filling up, we're still trying to get rid of all of the junk that gets brought across with all of our uh, with all of our Vita products. That's, that's that's quite impressive. Especially as there isn't another ship on its way out. So that, that is just that is the only ship. It's flown all the way out there, started loading up, and we're still trying to deal with what it brought last time. <laughs> but over here, you can see that we now have quantities of stuff. Uh, Tristan's put in more chests down here to hold buffer so we can increase the numbers further and further and further until we have enough of everything. Uh, and that's looking... I was going to say it's looking healthy. It's not looking that healthy. We're still short of both the... Oh, we're short of bio scrubbers apparently now and, and Vitalik Epoxy. But there is a bit of each of those in the warehouses up here. So it's not too awful. It's just not quite as healthy as we'd like it to be. Uh, you can see the train is um, off being very, very busy delivering stuff. Where's it gone now? It is over at Vitalic Reagent Drop in the bioscience area. Uh, it will then rattle through anywhere that requires it. So the reagent is all being emptied out there. And then it'll go over to... Uh, there's a vitamin lange extract drop somewhere that's asking for more. Then it'll go over to Module City to see if there's anything worth dropping there before it comes back to reload. So we've got a bit of prioritisation going on here. As someone commented fairly recently um, on, on, the, uh, on the last stream, maybe these, uh, maybe these priorities are in the wrong order. It's kind of hard to say what we, what we should be prioritising. Because, yeah, making more modules does mean we can make other things more cheaply, which potentially means better supplies of stuff. But we kind of like to try and keep the science going. It's a, it's a, it's sort of the point of Factorio. So, so yeah, that's what we're doing at the moment. We've un unloaded the reagent. We've now moved up a couple of stations and are unloading the, the uh, extract. And then if there's anything that's needed for Module City, then it'll be unloaded over there. But I suspect there won't be, because I think the reagent and the extract are the ones we get through in the largest quantities, just in general. And that's why we're trying to bring through a lot more of both of those over here, and why you saw so much extract being pumped into the ship over over in, uh, in Big Red Orbit, or Big Orbit, whatever we're going to call that one.
Tristan says he has also added all of the boosting stuff, so all the, the, the motors of the power receiver and the batteries to the, uh, the big grid orbit train, because this one wasn't moving fast enough, which is part of the reason it was struggling. The other reason it's struggling is because it's taking seven different things to all the different places that require them, and having one train doing all of that is a bit of a struggle. It's, it's, it's not really that much of a surprise it's, that it's having difficulties, but splitting it off at this stage of the game is going to be rather difficult. Maybe we should be putting in a second train and having a sort of a, a waiting area around here or something for it to, for it to sit in. Or it could pull in here, wait wait until there's space in this station, and then pull out and go in. So we could have two two trains on the run at all times. Uh, that might make things run a little better. I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but it would at least allow for a bit more throughput. And we could do something similar with the Immersium train as well, have it pull in here, park for a moment, and then go in here to grab grab as, as necessary. And yeah, get, and that would theoretically double the, the available throughput. Uh, the downside then is that the, the uh, bottleneck would still be the uh, the amount that's being brought over in the spaceships and the amount that's being made over at the other end. But you know, it's a way of improving the logistics at least, anyway. Tristan said that he also had to nudge a few extra trains to come in here and pick up the uh, all the stuff that's been brought over from Bigrid. And this was because a large quantity of core fragments have been brought over. And normally these trains are triggered when there's a certain quantity of items in the warehouse, when the warehouse is starting to get a bit full. And so if it fills up with core fragments, that's a lot, a smaller number than, uh, because core fragments only stack up to 20, that's a much smaller number than if it's filled up with other things. So if you fill up with, with methane ice, for example, you've got te literally 10 times as many items in your station as you have if you fill up with core chunks. Uh, ores are about double, or two and a half times, and I think that's probably what Tristan's based it on, because ores are the ores and coal and stone, those are the things that are, are most common and all of those stack up to 50, so that's a good number to start with there. Big Grid is slightly different because you get a lot of organics and the methane ice and the wood coming through. The barrels are also a problem because they only stack up to 10, but we don't tend to get barrels coming through in quite the same sort of quantities as, uh, as some of the other things, especially when core fragments go absolutely nuts. All right, I think I'm going to stop this video here because it's a nice chunk. It's about a third of the way through, which is what I'm sort of starting to aim for at this point. Uh, if I feel like I've, t I've talked about the uh, how, how things are going on with the uh, the Vita everythings, how things are going on with the immersiums, and a little bit about science as well. So I think that's a good it's a good point to stop. So thank you very much for watching. I shall be back tomorrow with part two of this video where I should talk about some more stuff. Um, we're going to go be having a look at the uh, the nacrotite and the and the vulcanite as well. And I noticed the vulcanite seems to be in a little bit of a concerning position. However, a, tr a spaceship has just arrived, so now we have loads of vulcanite available. That looks promising. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this, but maybe we'll take a little bit more of a look at it in, in tomorrow's video to see how the, how the numbers are actually going. I'll then be back again on Sunday for the third part of this, because I'm pretty sure this is going to be a three-part week, and then back again on Monday, where we should be carrying on with the stream. So we'll be doing a bit more of this, so trying to get the, the Immersium and the Vita, everything's running nicely, keeping an eye on everything else, and, you know, just trying to get the science going again, and that's going to be all dependent on quantum processes, I can just tell. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to be t having to think about how we want to expand that, and that's very, very much dependent on the Holmium, so we'll be, we'll be talking to Tristan in, in, in very serious terms at some point. <laughs> I shall then be back on Wednesday for the uh, next Satisfactory stream. They, uh, that was missed last week, or this week rather, uh, but we'll be back next week as normal, so 7.30pm UK time, where I should be carrying on with all of the, the not actually science packs, but effectively science packs in Satisfactory, and just trying to build things up a bit further, get things running nicely. And then finally, back at the weekend with more catch-up videos for all of the uh, Factorio content, so please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that. It'd be great to have you along for all of the other videos and streams and things that happen. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and goodbye.